Well, I am way up on QQQY. I don't know if I should sell it or not. Uh, my ROI is about 60% paid off. Let's talk about it and let's look at some charts. This is Mike, the tactical stock scalper. All right, all right. So here's NDX, and I want to show you uh, QQQY. So look at this chart, you know, pretty nice. Obviously ripping up. And we're going to look at QQQY. And obviously we have the, co the complete different story just because of the huge amount of dividends that are paid. Um, now, I bought it on, on Inception Day. And now my ROI is 60% paid off. I put all um, dividends I got from QQQY right back into it. And then I would sell options and put that profit right back into it. So my initial deposit was, was one amount of money. And then I kept putting options money that I would make from selling options into it, which is increased uh, my ROI substantially or the percentage to get to my ROI. So, you know, it's one of those things. 60% um, of it's paid off. But... NDX has just been ripping. Uh, I'll have to wait and see, but let me know in the comments what do you think I should do because I'm, I'm kind of torn here as to what to do. I mean, 60% ROI paid off. It's almost foolish to sell it, I would think, but I'm so high up on it that when the markets do start coming down, uh, I don't know what to do. Let's look at some charts. So we're going to look at NDX, SPX, IWM, or the Russell. And Tesla today. So let's start here with NDX. So NDX is, um, is, was in, has been in this channel. Let me show you this. And it hasn't really broken out of this channel. Right? We got the top part of the channel there. And you can probably clearly see the bottom part of the channel here. Let's kind of move this up a little bit. Right around in here. Right, so we got this channel. We know we're going to either break out of it or break down from it. All other channels as we see from NDX that it's been into at different times, uh, particularly through here. Right, we had a channel right through here. And we had a little breakdown from this channel, and I really thought, uh, oh, the markets are going to be in trouble. But nope, it uh, just went under the 20 EMA and came right back up and shot right through that channel. And we kind of got the same thing going on here. So will it break out of this channel like all the other channels it's been in, or will we finally have a breakdown? We'll have to wait and see. Let's go look at SPX. So SPX, like all its other channels that it's gone through in time, here's another great example of these channels that it just consolidates. It doesn't necessarily pull back. It consolidates. And then, so we get a correction through time here. This is a crude drawing here, but you get the point. We're a correction through time here and it channeled and rocketed right up. Here we go. Didn't have a pullback, had a minor correction through time with this channel, went up. And did you see the line I drew here? It came back, tested the breakout of the channel right there. And since has went up. So, uh, you know, all good things are, are still happening on the market. No reason to ever get concerned about the market unless the 20 period EMA gets broken on S. PX. So until then, you have nothing to worry about. Let's go look at IWM or the Russell, whatever you want to call it. So we made a video about IWM yesterday, pretty in depth about the Russell. And as you see here, we talked about will we break out of this middle channel on the Russell and IWM or will we uh, br come back down? into this channel well we're coming back down into it and we're continuing to um just hang in this middle channel will it come back down to 205 and, and the 200 level maybe um i bought a little iwm 
IWMY today because it was X state just a little. I hold off on buying anything uh, heavy on IWMY because we're still in this channel. So I only buy at the 200 level right there. I'll buy at the 195 level, like right over in here, right? And I buy at the 190 level that you see over here. These are my buy levels for um, IWM or IWMY. I wait for it to come back down into these channels, and then I buy. I don't buy up here at the top unless it's X state, and then I just buy a little on X state. So we're going to have to see what happens the rest of this week, um, how low uh, IWM or the Russell comes back down into its channel. Let's go look at Tesla today. Now, I sold all my Tesla positions, but I want to show you something. So, I sold Tes Tesla and TSLL right at the top of this buy zone, right? I, I sold right in here. Let me draw a line for you. I sold right in. I mean, I'm sorry. I bought right in there. I doubled all my buys so I could get a really low average. And then I sold all my Tesla and TSLL positions right here in profit um, because it just couldn't hold above 180. And this 180 level has just been a problem uh, for, for Tesla. Let me show you. Let's remove some of these drawings here. So let's zoom out here a little bit, right? So this 180 level, I'm sorry, do a better job here. This 180 level has been a problem, right? It used to be support, as you see here, right? As you see here, it used to be support. Now it is solid resistance. Look at all this right there. right here and until that's done it looks like it's going to continue to go lower tesla really's got to really has to get above 180 hold 180 and then we can go higher now the level on tesla that's really important i mean 180 is important but the main level honestly is a 200 dollar level for tesla um, that's where the you see the purple wavy line there. That is the 200 EMA. It is below that. As long as it is below the 200 EMA on a weekly time frame, it is really bullish. Now I do want to show you something else uh, that's concerning about Tesla, and another reason I've sold everything on Tesla-like products. All we've done, we'll just zoom in here because we don't need to look at all of them, is create lower highs. Right, right there. That high was lower than that high, right? So we're not going to go all the way back in time here. We're just going to go recent times here. This high, lower. This high, lower, right? You see what I'm saying here? This high, lower. And then recently, this high, lower. And each time... It creates a higher or lower high. It does what then? It creates lower lows, right? There. Here. Here's the most recent lowest low. So if it continues this pattern of creating lower highs and lower lows, it looks like we're going to get underneath this 160 buy zone. Now, this 160 level is, is the next buy zone for Tesla and any Tesla-like product. So if you're looking to possibly get out of Tesla, that is the very top of the buy zone. You see how we had a bounce from the 150 to 160 level right there? Right, we see that. That's why this is the next buy zone. And we also had a little pop way over. Yeah, well, I didn't draw a great line there, but way over there off the 160 level. So a lot of lines here, but the most important one if you're coming down and still holding Tesla or Tesla or TSLL, those type of positions is a 160. That's the top of the buy zone. 
As long as it's between 150 and 160, you're okay. This is not financial advice. I'm just telling you what I did. I loaded up heavy at the 160 level and would have loaded up heavier had it went down below 160 in between 150 and 160 would have loaded up heavy to get my average price really, really low. And then any little pop, I would have sold in profit just like I did. I got lucky that it came down to the first buy zone right there. I loaded up. It got above 180 and it couldn't hold 180. So I sold it for profit because I just do not like the look of the chart with the constant lower highs and lower lows. Look, as we zoom out, that's all it's done for two years. And eventually, if this pattern keeps going, guess where it's headed? Right here. Right? It's going to come down to this 100 level. I did not feel like holding for that possibility. And then maybe if it gets down to 100, it'll form a major double bottom and it could rock it up from there. Who knows? But in the meantime, I sold Tesla and TSL for profit. And you could do the same thing depending upon share size, not financial advice, just sharing what I did. If you like the content, gently caress the like button. If you really like it, subscribe to the channel. And please leave a comment. Let me know what you think I should do at the QQQY position because I am really torn. This is Mike.